Hi, good people. Happy Sunday. It's Sherry. So, um, hi, TIs. Hi, TIs. Um, okay, so it's Sunday. It's um, November 7th. It's Daylight Savings uh, Day weekend. So, um, I'm here and I have some free and valuable information for you guys. Information that will help you to benefit yourselves as well as others. Okay, so last time we were here, last Sunday was Halloween. So, we, um, I did a video and we talked about um, safety on Halloween. Mainly because it's a holiday that worships the devil. And part of the ritual on Halloween for people who worship the devil is human sacrifice. Because again... Um, Satan doesn't believe in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ um, versus the true God. Obviously, um, Jesus was the ultimate and proprietary sacrifice, so we don't need to do any human sacrifice. Jesus was it, okay? We don't need human or animal sacrifice anymore at this point, okay? So, <sighs> that was last week, and that was really important, um, important message, I, and I think you guys agree, right? Okay, all right. So, um, this week, I'd like to talk to you to continue on that um, same wavelength. I'd like to talk to you about angels. Okay. So who are they? What are they? What is their role? And what is our role with them? If any. Okay. So, um, cause that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the, um, the spirit world. It's quite fascinating, right? We all have a spiritual need. It would appear, right? I know, you know, you guys love Halloween and I, I'm thinking, you, well, you enjoy the idea of Halloween. And I'm thinking that's because you would like, you have a spiritual need, right? You want to know what the spirit world is, right? It's nobody talking, sometimes we don't understand it. So I'm hoping this video about angels will kind of shed some light on that for you, okay? And then it's, it'll be pretty enjoyable. I have some, uh, ex some Bible examples, um, interesting ones. Of course, the Bible's interesting. It is. It truly is. Um, okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And it's going to be brief. All right? Um, I just want to address something before I go on, though. Um, real quick, it was brought to my attention that during my videos, I might be laughing a little too much and portraying maybe a um, too much of a, I'll say, goofy type of persona. Okay, for that, I apologize. Duly noted. Duly noted. Um, appreciate it. And uh, I just gonna be honest here and, and say that I, I do know that about myself and sometimes you know I, I am a joyful person and I, I do like to have humor and you know it's a way of expressing myself and, and bonding with you guys um, but it also there's a little bit of history of trauma so I'm thinking that that's kind of maybe um, that's just something that I'm learning to work with okay not to laugh so much there's a time to laugh there's a time to cry there's a time for war there's a time for peace there's a time to you know plant there's a time to to harvest all that right okay so duly noted um, and so yeah um, and thank you guys for watching all right and also too I just want to say that when I do joke and laugh and smile um, sometimes you know it, it takes real strength to do that you know you know with everything going on so and that's my way of of keeping a positive vibe and trying to pass that positive vibe okay so but um yeah so anyways, moving on. All right, I'm not here to antagonize anybody. Um, I am here to help you guys uh, with a little bit of knowledge and, and getting to know some things, some spiritual things from what I've learned from the Bible, not my own interpretation or some hippy dippy, you know, this is what I think about spirituality. It's not that kind of video. We're gonna, I like facts, <laughs> I like science, and I like the Bible, both, right? Okay, and they work so well together. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Um, the angels, okay, who are they, what are they, and what is their role, and what is our role with them, okay, um, I also want to, um, like I said, I'm not here to antagonize anybody, and um, I, my goal is to help, and I want to promote peace, and, and, you know, and to get to know the spiritual things, right, about our spirit world, because there is a spirit world, there's the human world, us, flesh and blood, humans, animals, and then there's also another whole spirit realm of spirit people, including the true God. Now, when I say God, I do say the true God because some people are sneaky and they'll say, God, you know, I worship God. And you'll be thinking they're talking about the true God, of course, right? The creator, but they'll be sneaky about it. And they're actually talking about Satan, the God of this world, or they'll be talking about a demon God. So I want to be clear. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about the true God when I say God. He does have a name too, just like we all do. Um, it would behoove you to research it and find out what it is. Um, Jewish people are pretty good about using the true name of, of uh, 
the name of the true God. Okay, anyway, so moving on. We all have names, so does he. Um, and when I'm talking about God in my videos, I'm talking about the true God. Okay, that being said, so last video last week, we were talking about Halloween. We all survived it. Um, for those who didn't, no worries. That's why there is the power of resurrection, you know, that the true God can exercise, will exercise. Okay, no worries. It, it's serious, you know, it's very serious. So, um, yeah, and there is, you know, when you do these videos too, there is, there, it's so serious, There, it's it's a heavy subject. So I think that's why I laugh too, to kind of lighten it up a little bit, you know, because we're talking about some serious things. And, um, you know, and there's, with everything there, you have to, there's a price to pay, even if you're choosing, you know, Christianity, there's, there's a price to pay with that. Um, you know, it's not all rainbows and, and hugs and, and love, you know, everybody is, I mean, that, that is the majority of it, but then, you know, obviously there's people who don't agree with that type of lifestyle too, right? Okay. Mainly Satan and the demons and the people who worship them. Okay. So I'm going to cut no, cut no, um, what do they say? I'm not going to, I'm not going to code it too much. I'm trying not to sugarcoat it, right? No laughy laughy. Okay. The angels. Let's talk about it. Who are they? Okay, so this breaks down the, um, you guys know, just like a family, the mom, the dad, the kids, the animals. Okay. Um, and then, you know, it goes you know, the dad, the mom, the children, the older children, the younger children, the animals in that order. Hierarchy, right? Um, same thing with the spirit realm. Okay, so you have the true God at the very top, the creator. He created everything. Um, then you have Jesus. Okay, then you have the good angels, all different roles. You know, there's different types of angels. There are the archangel warrior types. There are the, um, I believe they call them the cherubim, like the ones who guarded the um, the gates of Eden, the Garden of Eden. Um, and then there's the seraphim. Yeah, and they're said to be winged and they fly around the true God's throne and do other things, but they're winged. Okay, so some of them even fly. They don't need parachutes or, or planes or anything. They, they can just fly. Um, and they also, well, we'll get into that, um, what they're, what their capability, what they are capable of, okay? Because they're pretty, they're very strong. You know, the spirit world obviously operates on a totally different, you know, they operate off of frequencies versus us. We're, again, we're flesh and blood and bone, right? So we're very limited in our, um, in our, the way we are in the world. We're, we're blessed, you know, it's a blessing. We're made in God's image. You know, we can do many things, especially with our mind itself, you know, um, but as far as capabilities, spirit realm is definitely way more powerful. Okay. So, um, the hierarchy, different positions, um, you know, um, all the angels are loved by the true God. So, and they're all important. They're important roles, different roles, but important roles. Okay. So now just, I just want to point out that there should be no communication done directly with the angels. Okay. Um, and again, that's because of the hierarchy. The true God is the creator. So any communication, you don't have to go through the angels. You don't have to go through saints. You can go directly to the true God, okay, in Jesus' name. Just want to make sure that you're aware of that because the angels now, the good angels, they know they're not supposed to communicate with humans directly. No. Again, that's hierarchy. You go through the true God. And if he wants or needs, feels a need to send an angel to give you a message, to protect you, to whatever, um, he'll do that. But that's up to him okay and the angels know that and it's a respect and um and that's and for humans we need to know that too because if you try to communicate with the angels oftentimes uh, obviously the good angels know not to but the wicked angels will definitely try to communicate with you and then you get yourself into a heap of trouble because then you my friend you are in the realm of channeling right get it like tv channels medium okay using your body as a medium right a media a conduit for to speak with Wicked angels, you never want to do that, okay? So, you want to pray, pray directly to the true God, okay? He appreciates that, and that's how we do it. Okay, now, um, again, the angels are very um, strong. They're spirit persons, okay? So, they are, they have capabilities. I'll keep it simple. They have capabilities. They can, um, obviously, they can fly. They can teleport. They can cloak themselves, uh, humans have that technology too. There is such a thing, a cloaking device. 
uh, mm -hmm. well, it's not really a device. It's the, the object doesn't really disappear. It's just to the human eye, it gets covered with frequencies so that you can't see it. Obviously, it's still there. You know, that's where those theory, invisible man and all that, and they're working on that in technology. So anyways, but the angels, we're talking about the angels, they have that capability so they can cloak themselves. They can fly. They can teleport. They can move things. They can levitate things. Obviously, they're spirit persons. So they operate very, you know, differently. Okay, versus us. We have, we're flesh and blood and we walk and we talk, right? Okay. Alrighty. So, um, I, sometimes in the Bible it will, because there's angels that have spoken with humans from the direction of the true God, and it describes some of them. You know, just, you know, it'll mention in some of the scriptures. So some of the um, things that I pulled out from some of the scriptures I read um, was that one, uh, was it Daniel met an angel and then the, their eyes were glowing, they're like really bright. Um, and it always does describe that even the true God, like when Moses, he couldn't look upon him because he was so bright. You can imagine their frequencies are probably so much higher than ours, like so much out of this world that we as with our human eyes, it's hard for us to absorb you know so um so that's why i think the true god told moses to look away you know don't look directly upon his face and whatnot so they're very bright beings um obviously very large and um and very strong okay now um picture x-men you guys x-men fans yeah i i do like x-men although you got to be careful because that's um that's trying that's almost a form of you know, ha trying to be gods, right? Humans are, have these powers. Humans don't have these powers, okay? I don't care how much exoskeletons, you know, that they're going to build. Um, humans will never be as strong as the angels, okay? That's just a fact. That's how we're built, okay? Um, but they're very strong, the angels, okay? And one example from the Bible, actually, there's three examples that I have for you. In, um, in the book of Second Kings, there was a war going on, and I think there is... The, the Israelites were warring with the Assyrians and um, the true God sent one angel in and he killed 185,000 Assyrian men. Okay. Now that was one angel, 185,000. That's a lot of men in one night. It didn't take them weeks to do it or months. In one night, one angel. They're very strong very and that was a good angel and um there's a backstory obviously but the assyrians were known to be a very wicked people obviously they were pagans so they were worshiping demon gods okay and uh and they were also very cruel in their um in their rituals how they would do it i guess there was um if i recall there was they they did things like skinning their enemies okay that's that's above and beyond Okay, even in warfare, you do, you know, have to kill the enemy, but you don't have to skin them, right? Okay, that's the difference between the true God and a demon God. Yeah, you see it? Okay, one is done for necessity, one is done for torture. There's a difference. Okay, so one angel kid killed 185,000 Assyrians. Okay, so that's how, that's an example of their strengths. Number two example is the story of the Prince of Persia. Okay, and that's in the book of Daniel, and that's a wonderful backstory too, if you want to get into that. It's Daniel chapter 10, okay? If you, there's only like 10 verses or 15 verses in the whole chapter. Very, you know, just a little paragraph, really. Um, easy to read. So, but in the book of Daniel chapter 10, it talks about how the Israelites were exiled from their original land because, you know, they had sinned and everything. And so, you know, pagan nations were allowed by the true God. Sorry, the birds are going in their cage. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking back. Anyways, um, the, okay, so the uh, Israelites were in a different country. They weren't in their own, they had been exiled because they had sinned against the true God. And he had told them, you know, I'm going to let a pagan nation take over. So if you can imagine, you know, they had their names changed. It was kind of like slavery, you know, Daniel had another um, Babylonian name given to him, you know, uh, that's just like when slaves were brought over, they were given different names, you know, the names of their slave owners. And that, you know, it, it's very um, a demeaning process and very, you know, I would imagine very fear provoking well anyways but daniel was a solid man and he was praying and he had prayed to the true god okay and he was he was favored a bit you know the true god did um did um hear his prayer so the true god sent an angel to daniel to give him an answer to tell him because there was an ineminent war coming you know and 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 this was all foretold prophesied and everything and daniel they wanted to know you know was what's going to happen were they going back home when you know 
um, they wanted to know and it was important you know this they were um, in the Persian Empire okay so Persia took over after the Babylons Bab Babylonians and why are the birds going crazy right now right as I'm recording ah birdies <laughs> it's like bird box no it's not it's not it's fine there's nothing you know spiritually unclean here so praise the true God um, so anyways with the Assyrians they you know or the Persians that's where Daniel was living at the time there was they were a world power so there was gonna be a war and you better believe it when it's a war the true God you know it, you know it's spiritual warfare too. humans we war right I say we but countries war with one another right over territory over land over whatever you know religion um, you know and um, also the spirit realm wars is warring too you know Satan and the demons against the true God and the and the good angels so in chapter 10 um, an angel comes to Daniel and he's telling him, you know, the true God heard your prayer and he and he is um, prepared to give you an answer and everything. So and he said, I'm sorry, it took so long because it took the angel 21 days to get to Daniel. And he said, um, I was fighting with the prince of Persia for 21 days. So it was a it was a long fight. It was it was a it was a intense fight, I imagine. Now, when he said when the angel is talking, when he says I was fighting with the prince of Persia, Mind you, he's not talking about a human prince of Persia. Because again, one angel killed 185,000 humans, right? In one night. So one angel would have to battle with one, you know, human prince of Persia. No, what he was talking about, as the Bible brings out, is there is a demon prince of Persia, which is now Iran. And not just to pick on Iran. It's there, all countries, right? This is a, a worldwide thing, Yeah. You know, and, a, and a, even the spirit world. So it's not just one nation. But usually with nations, especially ones that are world powers, of course, they're going to have, you know, demon rulers that want to have a say-so on what's going on, right? And then that's when the true God also, obviously, be, being the creator, has his say-so of what goes on. Okay, so the true God was sending um, that angel to answer, to answer um, Daniel. But it took him 21 days because he was fighting with the prince of Persia for 21 days. And that, so basically two angels fighting. One good angel, one bad. Obviously the good one won because that's, you know, he got to Daniel, got to deliver the message. Interesting, yeah? But that's how powerful angels are, okay? Um, now, a third example of um, how powerful angels, angels are is in the book of Genesis. That's in the early Bible. And I'm not picking on anybody. This was just an example about how the strength of angels. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Who they are, what they are, their role, our role with them. In Sod with Sodom and Gomorrah, it was um, it was determined to be destroyed um, because they the inhabitants wouldn't turn back from their practices that were not um, that were not acceptable to the true God. Okay, why does the true God get to say what's acceptable? Because he's the true God. He knows what's good and what's not good. Okay, and it's you know that's his prerogative to to decree to determine okay so he um and he gave him a chance to change but they um they chose not to so he chose to destroy their city and he sent two angels to do it okay so um so yeah that was interesting um and that was uh Sodom and Gomorrah okay and we know what happened with that um, but Lot, the nephew of, uh, Abraham was able to escape. And basically the angels had to hold his hand as they were leaving the city. You know, it's time to go. We got to go. It's, you know, it's, it's done. The city's getting destroyed. Let's get out of here. And then remember the wife of Lot turned around to look, you know, probably at, you know, whatever she was going to miss her, you know, and, uh, she got turned into a pillar of salt. Remember that? Yeah. Mm. I tell you, the Bible's interesting, guys. You already know, right? T.I.s and good people, right? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, so, um, so what we're talking about again, angels, who they are in the hierarchy. Now, you know, there's good ones, there's bad ones. You're not supposed to ever communicate directly with them. You don't have to, you can go strictly to, you can go straight to the creator himself. He has a name. I would look it up. Um, that's your little assignment. Okay. Prove to yourself, you know, you, you don't want to take my word for it. I could just be some some person on the internet just blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, but yeah you know um, so the roles who what who angels are what they are what is their role which is to glorify the true God and to be part of his community right as are we but we're in the human community okay we're different 
creation. And again, we don't need to approach the angels directly. We can go through the true God. And if he, you know, we can talk to him directly. If he thinks we need an angel for whatever has to be done, like in the case with Daniel, he wants to send a messenger angel. He wants to send a warrior angel to camp around you all night. And you'd never see him because remember, they're, they can cloak themselves, right? Who of us has probably been protected overnight or during the day by an angel that was invisible and that was right at our side like a guard dog? How many times has that probably happened with many of us? I know, I know it has with me. I know, and thank the true God for that. I know, there's stuff, you know, you sometimes you survive through stuff and you're like, I shouldn't have even survived through that. How did I? Because the true God was, was kind enough and, and merciful enough to help, you know? He can also change the hearts of people, right? He can cause even your enemies to be at peace with you. Again, which is why I'm always saying I'm not here to antagonize anybody. I'm not. This, that's not what my channel is for. Okay. Um, so, yeah. All right. So the angels, you guys know now where they fit in the hierarchy. Um, you know what they are. You know how strong they are. Picture X-Men, but like the real life X-Men. But they're actual angels, spirit creatures. Pretty, pretty fascinating, you know? There are some that they say are so strong they're holding back the four winds of the earth. That's the true God has assigned them to that till an appointed time um, when they're going to let loose the winds of the earth and whatever happens. It's it's fascinating, you know? The Bible is so, so fascinating, you know? Um, what else? Uh, okay, their capabilities. We talked about how they have access to uh, frequencies, right? As humans and angels, we all operate on frequencies. And I'm not this is a scientific fact if you actually the hospital many hospitals are doing surgeries now with um they call it the virtual knife okay ultrasound using ultrasound sound waves they've also obviously but always you know they've been using laser which is light amplification light waves okay um the spirit realm has those capabilities too um we talked about cloaking right they can be invisible um telekinesis they can move things they can levitate things um they can teleport themselves, right? Um, they can fly through the air. They have all these capabilities. It's fascinating, you know? Wonderful. Wonderfully made. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Some other examples of angels in the Bible. We, um, we talked about the one in Sodom and Gomorrah. We talked about the Prince of Persia, um, the two angels fighting the good one and against the wicked one. Um, and then we talked about the Assyrians, how one good angel was sent to kill off 185,000 Assyrians, okay, to help God's people, the true God's people. All right, another other examples of angels, they, they oftentimes do messenger type of work. That's what the true God will send them for. Um, you know, like when uh, in the book of Luke, when Gabriel told Mary that she would, you know, about her being pregnant with Jesus and everything, that was, that must have been an earful for somebody who's a virgin and, you know, and, you know, to, to know that they're pregnant and they're going to give birth to the Messiah. And wow, what? That, that's interesting. An angel was sent to be the messenger for that. Um, what else? Um, let's see. In Matthew the book of Matthew, after Jesus um, went to the desert um, and he was tempted by the devil and everything, and he had to, before he obviously was going to fulfill his mission of being the sacrifice for all of us, um, you know, the devil tempted him. He was hungry, he was fasting, he was in the desert, it's probably dry, you know, he's probably thirsty, and angels appeared to him after it was all done. Okay, so that was that was them being supportive, right? The true God sent them. Okay, and then. Uh, yeah. Oh, and also too in the book of Acts in the uh, in the New Testament of the Bible, um, an angel came in and helped release Peter from captivity. No, he didn't give him bail or anything, but he literally went in and undid his chains. And there were guards there, so obviously again he had to, you know, the angel had to cloak himself and was able to go in and take off those, um, you know, take off the the restraints and everything and 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 get Peter out. And um, also probably he was able to cloak Peter right to get past the guards so you know and this is all written okay so how fascinating is that right guys how interesting are the angels and how, the spirit world the good ones you know it's important to know you know that they're part of the hierarchy again and I, I keep repeating this but it's very important you know i know we all have a spiritual need and you want to get close to the true god um, but you're never to communicate directly okay it's always through the good angels first all right. Well, on that note, 
that was it for um, today. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, sorry, there was some uh, noise in the back hallway. Always, you know, when you do these videos, especially, <laughs> especially these kinds, you know, um, you just always got to be aware, right? Yeah, so. But um, yeah, that was it. That's it. We, we covered it all. All right, guys. So thanks so much for being a nice, patient audience. If you guys have any questions or any comments or anything, we can, um, I, I, I welcome that. So yeah, that's it. Good, happy, happy Sunday and enjoying this little extra hour that we got. You guys, we got a chance to reset a little bit. So let's, let's use it, right? We don't get that often. Hope you're enjoying it. That's it. That's all I had to say. Um, hope I didn't laugh too much tried not to. I know it's a serious subject. So, all right. On that note, have a great Sunday. Talk to you guys another time. Thanks. Bye.